Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink and wanted to get this video up earlier. <laughs> Life, as always. Anyway, this is the Poppy Fields stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and I think, I'm almost positive, this set was part of a the Stamp Timber limited edition kit back in September. The set is still av like is available individually. I'll have a link to it. I didn't get the kit, but I ordered this set because as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, <laughs> must own. You all know I love me some big florals, but also this set in particular, I just, I fell in love with it. I was like, I have to have it. I love this large cluster of poppies. There's a bunch of sentiments, but for this card, I'm using just this main image. And I have some Canson XL watercolor paper, have it in my Misty, and I am, I used my anti-static powder tool, and then I'm inking up this stamp with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to ink it up and stamp it a couple of times, because again, very large image, it's a fair bit of detail, want to make sure I get it all. And of course, I'm going to heat emboss this. You don't have to do the heat embossing. I just like doing it, especially when I'm doing watercoloring because it's like my little security blanket. It gives me those little raised edges, keeps everything a little more contained, and it just, yeah, it, it literally is a like comfort sort of thing because I don't have to worry too much about colors like going absolutely all over the place because I'm generally flying by the seat of my pants. So I thought this would make a very fitting card for today. Today being Remembrance Day here in Canada. It's Veterans Day in the U.S. Um, so poppies for Remembrance Day and I thought what better than a poppy themed card, thank you card, you know, even though I also believe that, you know, veterans deserve our thanks and gratitude 365, 24-7, for, you know, thank you for your service, those that have served, those that are serving, you know, all of it. Don't even have the words. So this is kind of my way of expressing that through card form. So I heat embossed this with just clear embossing powder, tilting it back and forth in the light to make sure I got it all heat embossed. Because again, with a large image, it's amazing how easy it is to miss areas, but I just tilt it in light and any areas that are dull and grainy, just hit that with the heat tool till everything is smooth and melted. Then I'm going to tape this down to my hardboard with some painter's tape. I especially want to do one like this, like tape it down. This just helps it from like curling up because I'm going to be adding a fair bit of water to this and it's larger than what I normally work on. So this helps prevent a lot of that. So I just use my painter's tape. I'm taping it down. Um, right now, this piece of watercolor paper is like six by eight inches, something like that. It's larger than the card like, cause I will trim it down when I'm done, but just to give you an idea of how large this stamp is, like it's huge. I love it. Love it. So I've taped it down and then for my watercoloring, I'm just going to use some distress inks. I just got my hands on the new lumberjack plaid distress color. That's the red. And so of course I'm going to use that. And I thought it was, again, it was like just meant to be, I was like this poppy image. I've had the stamp set just sitting here waiting. You know, I got that color and I was like, oh, of course, like perfect. So I have Lumberjack Plaid and Uncharted Mariner and Rustic Wilderness as my three colors. And I actually do go in and add a little bit of ground espresso, which you don't really see in this video. It's at the very top. I ended up smushing my ground espresso above the Lumberjack Plaid. I'll get to that in a second though. So first I added just water to this background. Completely covered. I ended up spraying water as well. So the whole thing is wet. And this just means everything's going to move, which you see as soon as I apply that Lumberjack Plaid purposely went outside the lines. This first bit is just an underpainting of color, you know, messy watercolor, something I enjoy doing, which I know is very intimidating when you're just starting out. Trust me, I know. I used to watch people way, way, way back before I really started dabbling with watercoloring and I was like, I don't. I don't understand. How do you do what you do? You know, how do you figure it out? Practice. The more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it. Now, I don't even really think about things like this. Like, it just works. Although, I'm going to admit, as I was doing this, I was like, this looks like a hot mess. What the heck am I doing? 
I, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But in the end, when it's dry, you know, you got to trust the process. And like I always say, and, and I, I do say this as well, you know, do as I say, not as I do. The amount of times I just shake my head at myself. But, you know, if you're not feeling it, walk away, come back to it, those sorts of things, you know, like go through with it. It is just paper in the end, you know. So I did my underpainting. And then I completely dried that. You can always let it air dry, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I'm not going to walk away from it. You know, I just dried it with my heat tool. And then for the actual painting, all the same colors, just a little bit less water. So it's more concentrated and I get that deeper color. And this is where I was bringing in the ground espresso. It's at the very top past the red. I was mixing that in. I was only adding the ground espresso color to like the bases of the petals you know, because when you add brown with red, it helps kind of deepen it a bit. And it just gave it a little more definition. I've super, super sped this up in editing. This is not how fast I paint at all. <laughs> at all. This took about... Normally, I don't really time myself. I only mention it because I notice it on the some of the footage at times. Um... And depending on things, like sometimes I'll do things in, in sections, you know, I'll work on a bit of a card and then I have to go off, you know, deal with my kids or do this, you know, different things. But I did see the timestamp on this and it took me about 45 minutes, roughly something like that. So yeah, this is super, super, super sped up in editing, but I just went along and painted and because everything was heat embossed those raised edges I don't have things running into each other so I'm not worried about you know the red running into the green etc but I did all the the petals first with that lumberjack plaid and the ground espresso and then the greenery I did a mix of that uncharted mariner and rustic wilderness and I even brought in some of that lumberjack plaid and mixed it with the green which neutralizes it creates a little bit of mud which I talk about in other videos and just gives it a little bit of variation. So after I was done all my painting, I had it completely dry at this point. And because I did this with distress inks, they are water reactive. So right now I'm just splattering clean water all over this. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute or so. I even blast it with my heat tool a little bit, not to dry it, but just to dry it a tiny little bit. And I'm gonna pick up that wa those water droplets and you immediately get that effect of the inks, you know, reacting with the water droplets. I love this. Some people do not like, especially when I do paintings like this, do not like all the splatter I add. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I like the texture. I like, I don't know. I can't even explain what it is for me, but I just, I genuinely like having the different types of splatter and I don't know, for me, it livens it up a bit. So after the water splatter, I splattered on a little bit of the lumberjack plaid mixed with water and a little bit of the uncharted mariner mixed with water. And then my final bit of splatter, because you know, more is more. I'm using perfect pearl powder and I just mix that with a little bit of water as well. And I'm using my fan brush, swirling that around. This I splatter really, really heavily all over this background and I even grab a different brush to get like a bit larger of splatter. The thing with Perfect Pearl mixed with water is it, it's more subtle of a splatter in my opinion. Just It just depends on how the light hits it. You know straight on you don't see as much of it and then when the light hits it and it you know reflects then you see that beautiful shimmer splatter. So I'm gonna go in heavy-handed as always. So I let everything completely dry, splatters dry, the background dry, like everything is dry. When you're peeling off painter's tape, you want to make sure your background is dry. Otherwise, it can literally separate the layers and like rip and tear your painting. Not a good time. You don't want that. So I peel the tape back against itself. Everything's dry. We're good to go. I'm going to trim this down like I'd mentioned earlier because I want to put this on a five by seven card. So I end up trimming this down to about four and a half by six and a half inches just enough to give it a nice border with the card base so I just kind of went around and trimmed off um, the edges and then trimmed it down just just a bit more you know till I got things evened out to where I wanted it with this background and I'm just using my what I call my big mama guillotine to trim everything down and then I was going to show like making the card, um, like the card base itself. But when I went to grab white cardstock, I already had a five by seven card from 
some previous project. But normally I would just take a full sheet of Simon's Heavyweight White cardstock and I trim it down to 10 inches by 7, scored at 5 inches. So this will be a side folding 5 by 7 card. And then I fold it inside out so that the inside's facing up. And I put that into my Misty. I repositioned the large poppy field stamp and I inked up the stamp with that Rustic Wilderness ink. Now Rustic Wilderness ink is a pretty intense ink. So to soften it, I put a piece of copy paper in the Misty first, stamped it with that. And then without re-inking or anything, I immediately removed the copy paper, stamped that image down onto the inside of the card. So I've got the color of that Rustic Wilderness, but it's much softer. And then that will also help the sentiment stand out a bit more. And I chose one of my favorites, this uh, sentiment from the Extra Talkative stamp set. I love it. I also thought it was fitting for this card, this theme, this day. So I lined up that stamp on the inside of the card. And this one I'm inking up with the um, Lumberjack Plaid Distress Oxide Ink. I do prefer the oxides for stamping. It just depends. I could have used like the Rustic Wilderness Oxide. It, I'm all over the place. Like use whatever works for you, you know? So I stamped that sentiment with the oxide ink. I let the card base sit there to let that oxide ink dry because it does take a little bit longer to dry. And then I had die cut this thanks sentiment multiple times from white cardstock, stacked all those layers together with craft tacky glue. And then the outline I had die cut from vellum. So I'm going to adhere that sentiment to the vellum. I'm going to stick it under some acrylic blocks just to hold everything in place. Let that glue dry. And then I'm going to um, do the same thing with the card front. So I'm using my craft tacky glue to adhere this to that card base. And this gives me, you know, that those couple seconds of wiggle room that I need. You know, to get things straight. Because no matter what, you know, you go to adhere the, the panel to the card and it's like, oh no. You know, you got it crooked. So liquid glue for the win. Gave me a second there. Got it straightened out. Let that dry. And then to adhere the sentiment, I put just little tiny dabs of the glue right behind the word so that the glue doesn't show through the vellum. And then I gently laid that down. I didn't press it down yet. I laid it down and then I took my little uh, T-square ruler to make sure I've got the sentiment straight because again... The older I get, my astigmatism's getting worse in my eyes. I just, I don't have that, those wonderful eyeballing skills I used to have. I used to be able to line things up, you know, perfectly straight all the time. Now I need all the little tools and tricks to <laughs> straighten it out. So anyway, got that adhered. I'm going to put acrylic blocks on it and that's actually going to finish off this card. I decided not to add any other bling or anything. I just, I like the way it is with the splatter and the watercoloring and the heat embossing and the sentiment just like that and I really like how the underpainting dried I wasn't meaning for it to turn out like that but it kind of looks like a sky like almost like a sky with pink clouds you know which we actually get around here with some of our sunsets the clouds do turn pink so anyway um, I paired this with one of Simon's new A7 envelopes. These are actually really nice. I just opened the package to grab to go with this card. And I was like, ooh, these envelopes are nice. They have a little bit of texture to them and they're a little heavier weight. And I'm impressed. So I will have links to those along with everything else. That will be in the description box below the video if any of you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, thumbs up and commenting, subscribing very much appreciate you all and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!